Every one of us has been anxious at some point in our lives, whether it's going into an exam, a job interview, or having to give a speech at a wedding. And some of us get that churning feeling of anxiety without knowing the reason. Today, the first of a three-part series into this troubling condition. It started with a massive panic attack and um, during a game of softball. And it, my life literally changed as I ran from home plate to first base. Um, and I just had this overwhelming feeling of fear. And from first base to second base, I had absolute gloom and my heart was hanging out of my chest. And running around, by the time I got to home plate, I grabbed my bag, jumped in the car and headed for a hospital. Anxiety is getting much more recognised these days than it used to be. Um, it's still that the typical uh, person in the street doesn't really know what we mean by anxiety generally and, uh, and, and sufferers themselves, once you point out their anxiety, uh, are very, recognise it very clearly, but people often don't think of it as a problem or an issue. Anxiety is very much something that's part of the personality, it's something that kids are often largely born with and they're like that very much across their lives. And so whenever you start to talk about anxiety people will, will often say, well I didn't realise that was a problem or an issue because it's just the way I've always been. What is the relationship between anxiety and depression? Anxiety and depression are very closely linked. Around about 60 to 80 percent of anxious people, whether it's children or adults, will at some stage also uh, be quite depressed. We all get anxious from time to time, but where's the line in the sand where anxiety actually becomes an illness? Most experts would say it's where it's interrupting our lives, affecting our relationships, our studies, our work. And there is a view that some people are born with a tendency to anxiety. It's part of our personality, if you like. Whether anxiety is really a personality issue is, is a controversial and, and difficult uh, concept. Uh, certainly my personal view is that um, anxiety is very much a personality style. People who are anxious tend to be anxious. Most of them tend to say that they're always that way as long as they can remember and they have a general way of looking at the world in terms of danger. They tend to perceive danger in the world. They tend to think that anything that's, um, that they're not sure of will turn out badly. Medication actually works uh, well for anxiety. Uh, we don't tend to use medication and we find that we get results that are just as good without medication. What kind of medications? The main medications tend to be the SSRIs, that is the serotonin specific reuptake inhibitors. Uh, and these medications have traditionally been used for depression, um, but also seem to have very good effects on anxiety. One of the things that's, that's crucial in anxiety is that they, uh, people who are anxious tend to interpret situations in a very negative and very threatening way. And so what we do is we teach them how to look at the world more realistically. I couldn't understand that something that was that physical could be anything but um, a heart attack or some terrible catastrophic failure of my whole system. For treating the physical symptoms is very much uh, the treatment for anxiety. So we basically treat the anxiety as we normally would with one of our anxiety programs and we tend to find those physical symptoms disappear. A tendency to anxiety often first shows up in childhood but parents, teachers and even doctors fail to recognise it and the child is left in agony without any help and feeling isolated. Anxiety in children and young people comes in various forms and it's worth knowing what these are. The, probably one of the most common uh, types of anxiety that we see in our clinic uh, is referred to as generalised anxiety. Um, the best way to think about these kids is that these are the worry warts. They, they just worry about everything. They worry about negative news that they hear um, on television, or they worry about their pet rabbit starving to death, or they worry about their parents' financial situation, uh, anything and everything. And as a result of their worry, um, they often tend to have a lot of physical problems as well, a lot of headaches, stomach aches, uh, and, and a lot of avoidance behaviour. One of the other common ones is separation anxiety. Uh, these typically tend to be younger children, although not always. Um, and they're the children who just tend to have real difficulty separating from their parents. Their, their main worry, um, when you manage to get down and ask them, is that they worry that something terrible will happen to their parent when they're away. So they might worry, when I'm at school, mum will get attacked and killed by a burglar, or that um, dad will be in a terrible car accident and I'll never see him again. 
And as a result of that, these kids don't like to separate. So they tend, uh, they, they uh, don't go and have sleepovers with friends. Um, they often don't let their parents go out in the evenings. They often, uh, these are often the kids that don't want to go to school during the day. And it's not because of the fear of the school, it's because of this fear that something bad will happen to their parents. The, probably the third big uh, type of anxiety problem is social anxiety or social phobia. And these are the kids who are broadly described as shy. They're kids who worry very much about what other people think of them and therefore they tend to avoid social interactions. And these are the ones who the teacher says is a quiet little lamb, golden child sitting at the back of the class. Absolutely. These are the ones that are often the model student and, and the teachers love them because they sit very quietly, they do everything they're told, but a lot of that is, is coming from a basic fear that if I do the wrong thing, someone's going to think badly of me. And over the next two weeks on Tonic, we'll look at anxiety disorders in children and adolescents, what form they take and how they can be helped.